Let's start the video out looking at a typical neighborhood bakery in Saudi. Cookies and breads. Signs of breads and things. Different kinds of flatbreads. These look really good. And those look really good. All right, this is gonna be part of a two-part series where we're gonna be talking about what to bring and what not to bring when you're heading overseas and you're gonna be working a gig. After years of military contracting overseas and I'm getting ready to retire, I thought I would pass on the information that I learned over years of working abroad to inspire others to reach out, check out the world, see the jobs that are overseas and learn something about yourself. You're gonna be working one of your first contracts overseas uh, this is the idea is going to be let's set this up that you've been hired you're going to be flying overseas primarily into a Middle East position could also be in a European position as well because there are both European and Asian overseas jobs that are available and in those jobs you're going to find uh, similar type situations however in positions that are in Europe in positions that are uh, in Asia uh, you often have more uh, available around you as far as commercially, whereas I'm particularly going to be discussing working in a Middle East environment where you're going to be on an isolated base and the most that you're going to have is what you call your exchange, which is going to be on your base where you can buy basic items. That's going to be what we're talking about, okay? We're going to do the first video now. It's going to be discussing uh, what you want to bring, okay? Uh, your first trip out okay uh, basically we're going to start out with what documents to bring to make sure that you have copies you don't have to bring originals and I recommend you don't uh, keep all that stuff locked in a safe back home but you want to bring out with you uh, documents such as you want your copy of your DD-214 copy of your birth certificate okay you want to make sure you bring copies of any type of educational graduations that you had, such as your uh, high school graduation, any college graduations, any uh, after college educational certificates that you earned. Make sure you have all that. These are all items that you should scan and bring copies with you. If you have a social security card, make a copy of that, bring it out. All this stuff is gonna be asked, these numbers are gonna be asked, copies are gonna ask to be scanned, things like that. They just upload them, they, they fill out personnel files. When you get in country, they're gonna fill personnel files out and they want all this stuff scanned. They're not looking for originals. A lot of that originals, that's all been done as part of your uh, clearance. It's all been done as part of your hiring process and that's finished. They just want copies and they're, they're trying to build a personnel file on you uh, that they'll have in country, okay? Uh, again, any type of professional certificate that you have, any kind of journeyman license, uh, any type of uh, professional licenses, CDLs, commercial driver's licenses, any type of uh, information technology certificates that you have, you want to make sure you bring copies of that. Uh, again, all the originals have probably already been uh, requested by the company from those organizations and they are going to have copies already built for the company. These are gonna be for in-country, all right? So just bring photocopies of all these types of things. There's something called an international driver's license. This is something you can pick up at uh, a AAA in your neighborhood, okay? Go to one of the AAAs, and it costs about 25 bucks right now at the time of this video is being made. They just look at your actual driver's license and they can make one up for you. There's a photograph involved. Uh, they build this uh, international driver's license for you. And this is often required in a lot of uh, military bases overseas uh, when they're in foreign countries. If you're gonna be driving a uh, pickup truck or something like that, your company may have a commercial vehicle of some kind, an equipment vehicle to get around. Uh, you may have Tahoes wherever you get. Uh, things like that to, uh, that you can drive to get around and you need to have an international driver's license. Your company will give you more information on that as to whether you need to get any type of a license in country. Another thing that I bring is I bring uh, bank, property, 
and any vehicle certificates that I have, copies of all that. And the reason is if anything happens that you need to deal with, you need to have those numbers ready. Things like property taxes, that sort of thing, registrations, you can do a lot of that online, but you have to have the numbers. And you take it for granted because back home you have all that stuff. You just know to go to the closet and grab those papers and you're good. But have photocopies of all that and have it with you so that you can go online and you can make all those payments in a timely manner and you have the numbers that you need to do it. And the same thing with banks. You don't think about it right now, but what about customer service phone numbers, things like that? You need to have all that with you so that you're not trying to search for it, you're not trying to find it, you're not trying to find uh, uh, medical insurance member numbers. Uh, how about your kids' social security numbers? Um, all that kind of stuff. Things that you may need in country when you're talking to somebody on a phone. You don't wanna go searching for it, you just wanna have it, all right? Another thing that I like to do is I like to take all these items, all these documents that we just talked about, and I scan them. I have a hard copy of the scan that I'm bringing with me in a folder. And then I'm also emailing all of these to myself. That way I have an electronic copy in case I lose them, whatever the case might be, it's just sitting there in my email, okay? And if I'm anywhere and I need these things, I just tell someone, can I just log on? And I log on, I get the document they need, and I think I'm just gonna send this to you, email this to you, and you print it out. Happens all the time. It is so good to have these documents emailed to yourself so you have them, okay? Passports, all of this. Scan them, have a scanned copy, and then email yourself these items as well, all right? Next thing we're gonna talk about is what you need as far as daily use. You are going to have an exchange on base, okay? That exchange is going to be possible to buy things like toiletries. However, you're gonna be in transit to get overseas for maybe two weeks. So my suggestion is have toiletries in the small travel size for about a week to two weeks, okay? Shaving equipment, toothbrush, toothpaste, that kind of stuff. Because you're gonna be going from military base to hotels, uh, maybe they put you up in an apartment for a, for a week when you get in country, until you get to your military base. Once you get to your military base, you will be able to go buy these types of items and it won't be an issue anymore. But uh, for that transit, you wanna make sure you have those toiletry items. Okay, don't bring any large bottles. You're just gonna get them taken away at uh, the airports and then you're out, all of that, okay? Travel size, everything. As far as clothing goes, bring one set of civilian clothing, all right? Don't bring a bunch of civilian clothing, just bring one set of civilian clothing. Uh, that way you have the ability to wear civilian clothing in airports if necessary. And you can buy things if you need to when you get out to you. You can buy Under Armour shirts and things like that, okay? As far as work clothing, you wanna make sure that you bring work clothing that is authorized by your company. Polo shirts, is your company gonna provide these? If so, maybe you only need one on your own. You don't wanna bring a bunch of stuff. Everything you have, you're bringing in a massive duffel bag that's gonna be heavy. So think about that and don't bring extra stuff you don't need. You wanna have a 511 style cargo pants. Um, should you have cargo shorts? Ask uh, folks that are already out there if they're wearing that because they may not be wearing shorts. Here in Saudi Arabia, we're not wearing cargo shorts. We have exercise shorts if you're going to the gym and that's it. So we're wearing long pants here, okay? And they're the very tough ripstop style cargo pants that are gonna last. As far as shoes, I suggest bringing two pairs of shoes. One is an exercise shoe. I brought an exercise shoe that's black, and that way I can wear it with my civilian clothes. It just eliminates another pair of shoes. Also, you're gonna want a pair of lightweight hiking shoes that you can wear with your cargo long pants. Uh, that is gonna get you through, okay? Uh, I would make sure that it's quality. I like the Columbia brand myself. A lot of people like Merrill's, uh, very quality. 
but you've got to take care of you're going to be doing a lot of walking on rocks and gravel and sand you need to have stability you need to have comfort you need lightweight you need breathability in your shoes all right socks and underwear i would personally say at the most two weeks worth and you can do laundry okay when you're in country don't bring a whole bunch of stuff uh, think about this that you're going to have to carry all this quite often you're going to have to carry it especially if you're hopping from base to base now for myself just so you understand that when i'm here i have a home base and then i'm going from base to base to do work i'm just bringing a, a light backpack with me with two or three days worth of stuff so that's something to think about is having a light backpack with you okay so you have your big duffel bag that you're carrying everything with and then a light backpack that you can carry a few things with and if you want to carry that separately that's fine or maybe you just roll it up and stick it in your duffel bag so you just have it for when you're in country okay okay uh, before you get out before you get out to the country your company is going to have you do a bunch of training you're going to be doing a lot of training online Things like security courses, survival courses, cultural courses on where you're going. You want to bring all those certificates with you. Okay, bring all of that with you that you've uh, that you've taken online and all those forms. Any kind of ID cards that your company has got, you bring those cards with you as well. All right, and that pretty much covers you know what you want to bring when you first come out. Try to remember that if you need extra stuff, you can order it on Amazon. If you need toiletries, you can buy it on the base. Uh, if you need any more civilian clothing, you can order it on Amazon while you're out here. Uh, I would not bring a lot of extra stuff. And we're gonna do a second video. We're gonna talk about what not to bring, okay? But I want you to think along the lines of lightweight. As few items as you need and uh, like, I'll tell you, I brought a uh, small flashlight, handheld flashlight with me that has a belt clip. I have a multi-tool that I bring with me that has a belt clip. And I'm a ball cap, keep the sun off me, sun lotions, things like that, but very little. I, I just decide along the way, if I need any more, I'll buy it along the way. I wait till I get in country and figure out what's happening here, what's going on, what do I need? And a lot of that is available, all right? Okay, so the second part we're gonna be talking about with this video, uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment, is gonna be what not to bring. So come back again later in the week, we're gonna discuss that. And leave in the comments if there's anything that you would like to add to this list of what to bring, what's helped you. And also if you have any questions about something to bring, uh, we'll be able to kind of go over that, uh, if you should bring it or not, all right? Have a good day.